flowers would be dying and we wouldn't, wouldn't have, have any fruit. tea and that would be bad. I started with one hive. I grew to 17 last summer and then lost a number of bees due to colony collapse. The phenomenon of CCD or colony collapse disorder still remains a bit of a mystery. We don't know why these bees don't return to a hive that affects agriculture. In the United States alone, $15 billion per year is at risk. When I learned that we lost half of our honeybees, I decided, well, I'll learn how to beekeep so I can do what I can to help out. These are, here's a bumblebee, and here are my bees. They're in here working them. People come by and ask us about the bees and what's going on and how can they get involved or how can they taste the honey. There's a lot of honey in here. Ooh, it's so full of honey, it's hard to move anything in here. <laughs> Here we go. Herc, you coming? Come on. Well, the bees are right this way. On the trellis, we got different kinds of beans. They're those big, flat fava beans. They're delicious. These are yellow raspberries. They're just coming in. And you can see here the bees working them. They work on the asparagus, the herb garden, the apple trees here. Every third mouthful of food you eat is pollinated by a honeybee. Squashes, melons tomatoes, almonds. These are sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes with a dog in them. Hey, Herc, get out of there. There was a rabbit in here yesterday. So here are the bees. I got my little apiary. It's called Eat Fire Spring Apiary. We make about 500 pounds of honey a year, of which I eat about 40 pounds myself. So the rest I peddle or trade or give away as gifts. It's a great hobby. But if all the honeybees died, there are not enough uh, native pollinators to pollinate all the crops we have. Yeah, we'd lose a lot of things. Yeah, we grow melons and anything that flowers. And we are very glad to have the bees here because they do help us out with pollination. Uh, our watermelons are a little larger this year. And uh, so we really like that. We really think that that's cool. Well, this is a neighborhood that was a depressed neighborhood, but now is up and coming. This is a co-op. It's called the Chicago Honey Co-op. It was began in uh, 2004 to help people who wanted to be employed learn uh, beekeeping. I think the problems that we have experienced have been the same problems that beekeepers everywhere experience. When we're looking in a hive, we're looking for mites and you know, things like that that would, you know, destroy the bees or cause the colony to decrease in number. So we're always checking to make sure that we have strong hives. We usually go through the top part because we can check for the honey that way or check to see what they're doing. Sweetest bees. Excellent. Very sweet girl. Bees collect honey because, unlike most other insects, they figured out how to collect a food source and store it so that they can feed on it all winter. When spring comes, they can build up to great numbers, which is one of the reasons they're such effective pollinators. What uh, Mary does is she will take all of the surplus honey during the first honey flow. She will keep the honey to feed the bees during the winter and during the spring. Well, it just makes sense. You know, a, a lot of the commercial folks, the only way they can survive is by taking all the honey. What's happened is they take away the honey and then replace it basically with high fructose corn syrup. They give them coke for honey, which is a really bad deal. And that's one of the reasons why there is the colony collapse disorder is the immune system of the bees, which is completely diminished by intensive beekeeping practices. Mary, by leaving them their own honey and by feeding their honey during the winter, uh, keeps the honey bee healthier. 
commercial person seeing me doing this would just rip their sides laughing. They've got these big blowers that they come in and go and blow the bees out. I mean, it's probably no worse than my breath, but... Um, they work very hard, don't get me wrong, and they are needed, but they tend to push their hives a little bit too much. And then they become more susceptible to other diseases. All of these things piling on top of this poor little honeybee causes um, colony collapse, bee failure. Presently, I have 12 honeybee hives in New York City. The Upper West Side, Lower East Side, Brooklyn, Bronx. You're really gonna know you're in the city here. <laughs> I, I've been beekeeping since the early 80s. And the biggest problem that I have in the Berkshires is black bears. So I thought, well, gee, Manhattan, there's no black bears. Uh, plenty of rooftops, plenty of flowers, which provide uh, local honey for my customers. They are affected with pollen allergies. Taking local honey is a remedy for that. People say, well, you keep their hives in New York City, poor bees but they don't realize that there's such a variety of plants down here. And I don't move the hives, so there is a period of time during the summer and in the fall when they rest. Bees need to rest, just as us humans do. That's all honey right there. That's the best honey in the world. I'll let you taste it. Isn't that good? Men and bees, it, it's just, it's been a partnership for, for a long, long time, and um, we, can't, we can't lose that. This is the exciting part. This is the good part. I mean, there are a lot of people that say, I didn't know that you could beekeep, you know, in this area, in an urban setting. And look at all the empty rooftops where we could be growing things. The sky's the limit. I mean, this city could support easily a thousand hives easily, you know, and I'm just the tip of the iceberg, just a needle in a haystack, you know. <laughs> it takes a lot of people to pull this off. It's people working together, just like the bees. What we do Everybody gets stung by mosquitoes, Victor. <laughs> <laughs>